don't know about you, but to me, that is the sound of the entire population of Wales being converted into hippos. And they're all in the water outside Swansea Bay, you know, with their noses, just like this. For those of you who watched my last vlog, I left you kind of stranded in London, not being able to get back to Scotland. And my journey back was quite exciting. That day, I booked myself on three different flights, the last of which was actually from Southend-on-Sea to Glasgow on Stobart Air. And for those of you not from the UK, Stobart are a haulage firm. I was kind of disappointed that I didn't get to fly on Stobart Air because I wanted to see if they had a dirty teddy strapped to the nose cone. So the following day, I started at 5.30 in the morning, just determined to go north. Got as far as Newcastle via train, and then I had to get a taxi via Carlisle to Edinburgh. Now, I did try to film it, but unlike the kind of standard vlog adventure that you see, you know, people running down departure lounge going, gonna miss my flight, gonna miss my flight. This was actually fucking terrifying, but I made it back. Um, it's been an interesting few days. Uh, the, the, it didn't look like this like two days ago, it was white. Um, I did actually film an entire episode, but it was a bit like this. Fuck, shit. So I've decided to go again. Um, Hands in the Strings launch, fascinating. People's responses, wonderful. And a couple of just, at first it was like, fuck me, that's rude. And then it was like, actually, you know, this really brings up something that I don't think we talk about too much, and that's time. The main comment was, this is a cynical branding exercise by Spitfire. They basically bought Hans' name as if it's for sale, and uh, we've kind of mixed together some of our old libraries to make it sound big. And of course, my answer to that is, well, if we did that, it wouldn't sound like what you hear. And the reason for that is not just the sonics, the feeling is created by the amount of time. And by coming together with Hans, what we're investing in with him is the time that he spent with these hundreds of people in this environment creating his method. Now, I think you can copy people's style, I think you can copy people's compositions, but I think it's non impossible to copy method because method is something that you develop. I think I heard somewhere that you get Shaolin monks who can throw a needle through a pane of glass, but it takes about 20 years to perfect that art. I hear of sushi chefs and it takes, what, two or three years to learn how to make rice. It's not like, well, if you buy a recipe book by Anthony Bourdain, you're not suddenly able to cook like Anthony Bourdain. It's simply some ingredients that he suggests and how to kind of throw them together. But you don't have his method. And for me, the definition of method is the ability to adapt to your circumstance and your environment. It's about that this beef is a little tough, so I'm going to do this, it's a, like this salt is a little bit salt. It's about adapting to the, the minutia. It reminds me of when I used to mix engineer on an analog desk and you'd spend an entire day making these minute instinctual adjustments and suddenly the mix would just happen. So Spitfire Audio, when we started out 10 years ago, yeah, we totally wanted to copy hands. We basically wanted the tools that he created for himself, but we wanted them to sound smaller. So we started creating our own methodology. In fact, I've got a good string sound for you to listen to now. There's this intimate string sound that I'm yearning for. I'm not there yet, but I got a step closer. I often use the uh, Chamber Strings flat Handos, but they, they're they lovely and warm and kind of fuzzy, um, but they lack definition. And I want that sense of, you know, it sounding like a string instrument and having that kind of up-close sound. But what I find with small sections, when you combine them for some reason with samples, there's a kind of nasally quality that I really, it's not very attractive. Now this piece, I'm, I don't have the budget for live musicians. So I really wanted that that realistic, you know, I mean, I'm just playing pads. It's, it's very lazy kind of arranging, but I just wanted that lovely kind of intimate string sound. So I'm gonna play you where I'd usually start, which is with the chamber strings flatando. What is unusual for me is I'm using the close mics up with just a little bit of tree, so that gives it a lovely width, uh, but the close is kind of is, gives it an upfront quality that I don't actually usually like, but it's, it's suitable for this arrangement. Now, what I've done is I've taken the Ciccone ensembles, and again, just the close mic there, and I've just copied that region down.
which it's nice, but that's the nasal quality that I was talking about. But I also used these uh, waves in the Olafur's Chamber Evolutions. And, oh, someone's up early. And what I find with these is they give a, a shape... Uh, to the proceedings, to which adds reality. It's in the realm of the flautando, so it doesn't interrupt or interfere with the Sacconi timbre. I've got a cello here doing bottom stuff, and the flautando's the bass line, basically. <laughs> That's quite effective. It's not it's not 100% there, but it's closer to the sound I have in my head of that really lovely, intimate chamber sound. It's also great for the deep stuff because um, it doesn't get all kind of woolly and waffly. Now, again, this is not... You don't have to use Spitfire samples for this. I mean, obviously, the waves... I know that other devs do that kind of shape. But yeah, flautando, some solo strings arranged into a quartet, and then something that's shaped like that, I think is quite an interesting way of converting what is just a boring pad into something that sounds a little bit more realistic. I'll stick the full piece at the end of this film. Right, back to my slightly grumpy monologue. The great chefs learn from the greats. And for me, what determines a great is someone who does something so simple, you can't believe it's not been done before. So I'll return to the score Solaris by Cliff Martinez, which I think about more than sex. There's a great example of simplicity. No doubting his influences, no doubting what he's picked up from the greats. But he used a steel drum, not obvious for a science fiction score, playing simple ostinatos and underneath a kind of Steve Reichian chord structure with a beautiful orchestra. I'd been a fan of steel drums being used in a non kind of calypso manner since listening to Jaco Pastorius, his first album. I believe I may be wrong. It might have been a Mike Figgis score, but I've got a feeling it might actually be Black Rain, the Hans Zimmer score, used steel drums. They've always been on my radar, and I'm also a massive fan of Steve Reich. So when I heard Solaris, it's like, yeah, it's just so obvious. Why, why didn't I do that? And this is what happens. I call it the Mark Rothko effect. People look at a Mark Rothko and go, yeah, I could have done that. But you didn't. And this is the point. It's not just about coming up with the great ideas. It's creating a methodology that enables you to absorb everything around you, to take some diverse ingredients and to create something totally new. This hands project is not necessarily a cookbook. It is a set of the finest ingredients from 20 years of experience, from 20 years of Kaizen, which means constant minute refinements. I always use the same orchestrator because we've invested time in each other. So our sessions are not full of, oh, no, Ben, I didn't mean that. They're full of, oh, we should try more of that on the next one. And the same goes for Hans, not only a visionary, but a great field marshal, which is why we employed his generals, whether that be Jeff Foster engineering or Mary Scully leading on bases, as just two examples. We could have gone to the Czech Republic and paid some impoverished musicians a few crowns to overdub them for weeks and weeks and weeks. But I think that we would hear it, but not only hear it, we'd feel it. I'm able to go into a coffee shop and get a little tray of sushi from the refrigerator cabinet. Why is it different from, say, the sushi at Sushi Tetsu or, or the sushi at Sushi Jiro? It's the same ingredients. Well, I suspect it's the rice. I think it's interesting. I think the reason why these comments have arisen is there's a combination of Hans's name and a large number of uh, musicians. And I think what we've really struggled with is to say, and it's not just a kind of a big willy competition. It's not about, you know, I've put 300 oboes in a, in a hall, so my library's better than yours. God, could you imagine? I think you can have too much A. No, it's about us giving ourselves a, a challenging environment, a scenario to work in, to go, how can we get the best 
out of a mass of people producing a whole load of air. How can we make that not sound like cello soup? I guess the moral of this story is time. In fact, I was going to call the film Time, but it's not baity enough. And whilst I don't want to be patronising, I think all of us oldies remember what it was like to be young and impatient. But I think it's okay to learn. I think it's okay to think that you are better today than you were yesterday and that in 10 years time you're going to be 10 years times 365 days better than you were today. And in so doing I think it's just really important to invest in this time well. Learn from the greats, listen to great music, experience great things and that'll stand you in good stead when you're building your own method, your methodology. If you're new to the channel hit subscribe, if you like what I do hit like. I'm just about to fall down some ice.